All right, so in this particular tutorial, we're going to talk about doing crown molding on a wall, which is uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, one of the most helpful things I can tell you is there are a lot of uh, images of crown molding profiles out on the internet. So if you go to Google and type crown molding, and then I've already got it in here, but crown molding profile, um, you'll see that it gives you an option for the images of crown molding profile. Go ahead and click. And then there's a lot of different uh, images here that you could use. I actually downloaded this one earlier, but one of the things it will show you is the dimensions. So that's important so we know how to scale this. So I basically would right click on this and then choose Save Image As, and then save it to your computer somewhere. All right, I already did that. Uh, the second thing that we did is we also went to look for a chair rail. profile. And so if I click down here on images for chair rail profile, uh, you'll see that there's some nice options here too as well. And so I'm going to go pick one that, eh, let's see, one of these guys right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, right click, save image as, and then save this out to my hard drive. Uh, I need one last one here too, which is going to be a panel molding. And I can click here for images of panel molding. Um, one thing you want to be careful and um, watch out for is that some of these have a little notch here where it actually overlaps um, some paneling. So in our particular design, we don't want that particular style. Uh, we're looking for one that's a little bit more like this. Okay, so panel molding, wainscoting, so we would get something like that. I've already downloaded it though, so, so we'll be able to use that here in a bit. All right, so then let's kick off SketchUp. So for example, the first thing I need to do is bring in one of those images to trace over. So I'm going to go to the File menu and choose Import. And from that, I'm going to go look for, uh, let's see, I've got my crown molding image, and I think this is the one I used. You want to make sure that it says Format down here, All Supported Image Types. And you want to use it as an image, not as a texture or match photo, but as an image. Okay, you go ahead and click Import. Then you can click here at the origin and just drag this out. It doesn't matter what size it is because we're actually going to resize this later. So, but here in the beginning, what we can do is take our pencil or line tool and start tracing over this. So we're going to be using an arc tool and a line tool. So go ahead and start. You want to follow those, uh, those axes. That's really important. So for example, I was just on the red axis. Now I'm on green. I'm going to click over here on this diagonal and then again come down the red axis to stop drawing. Because see, I'm using our, our little rubber band effect, I guess. You can hit the space bar. I also need to draw one more line. So I'm going to come over here and draw again up that green axis. That's really important still drawing, so then I hit the space bar. And again, that's the, the method of drawing where you go basically click, move your cursor, you're not dragging, and then you click, 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 click. Okay, so that's the style of drawing that we're using for this. Anyway, the next step is to go ahead and grab some, uh, some arcs. And the most important thing here is to hover and find the endpoints. So you'll see there's an endpoint here and here. Click, need to hover until you find the other endpoint, click, and then pull this little arc out here. And it's perfect. So I'm going to click on this endpoint, I'm going to click on this one, and then again, I'm going to pull this so it's on the face in the image. Now one thing that I noticed is it didn't fill in. So I'm going to go look here and look what happened. When I created that arc, that arc was not on the face of the drawing. So what I want to do is go back and undo, go choose my, my tool again, I'm going to click, find the endpoint, and I want to make sure that this is on the face. Okay, this is blue axis, this is on face, there it is. So that kind of shows you that if it doesn't fill in with the surface, because remember in SketchUp, as soon as you close your edges, it fills in and creates a surface. If it doesn't do that, orbit and see if you can find out why. Chances are it's that you drew on a different plane. All right, so the last step here is now that I've drawn this, I want to resize to this 4 and 3 eighths inches. 
So we're using the tape measure for that, and I'm going to click on an endpoint, click on the other endpoint, and then I'm going to enter in 4 space 3 slash 8 and hit enter. SketchUp's going to ask me if I want to resize the model and choose yes. Uh, to find your drawing again, you can use Shift Z as a zoom extends. Um, also, I want to erase this guideline because when I measured that, it actually created a guideline. I want to also select this background so I can use the arrow tool or just hit the spacebar, click, and then press delete. So now we have our piece of crown molding that we're going to use. So what we want to do now is going to double click it, right click, and make this a group. And the reason that I'm making it a group is so we can easily manipulate it and rotate it. Um, we'll break it apart later. But uh, other ways to do that, but we'll just go ahead and use this. So use the move tool. You're going to hover on the edge until you find this, uh, this protractor. Um, and this happens when you hover over those plus signs, the red plus signs. And we want to rotate this up until it says negative 90 degrees. All right. And that just tells us that it is vertical. I think it's actually below the red-green plane, but that's all right. It won't matter for what we're doing. Okay, so at this point we need to draw a wall that we can actually test this on. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool, start drawing a rectangle, and I'm going to type, um, let's say, 10 feet comma 12 feet. So 10 apostrophe comma 12 apostrophe and then hit enter. Okay. We can use our orbit and, and pan tools to, to get this back in, in the screen. Now we're going to use the offset tool to create our walls. So you hover over here on the inside, click, move that in towards the center, press 4 and hit enter. Um, four is uh, four inches. You don't have to actually put the inch sign. Now I want to isolate the walls. So I'm going to use my line tool. And I hover over this endpoint, come along the red axis until it snaps on the edge. And now I'm going to do this on the same, uh, the same thing on this other side. I can then use my eraser tool to drag across those, drag across this one. And if I delete that line right there, it deletes the surface in the middle as well. So that's a, a quick trick. Now to pull this wall up into 3D, I'm going to use the push-pull tool. So I'm going to click, move my cursor up, and type 104 inches, which is what we're working on on this particular plan for a customer. So there are some different ways I can do this. If I want to be able to color my crown molding a different color, for example, I want white crown molding and maybe wallpaper on the wall, then I need to actually make the crown molding so it's separate. If I just draw it on this wall, I'd have to go through and paint, um, you know, use the paint bucket. It's a little bit more of a hassle. So if I go ahead and triple click on this wall unit here and then right click, I can choose make group. And by doing that, I can apply the crown molding here at the top. Um, and then be able to go back and paint them separately. So, so the first step is going to be to line this little piece here up on the top of the wall. And to do that, I want to grab the bottom corner and then move that up into place. So I'm going to use the Move tool. And sometimes it helps if you zoom in real close. I'm zooming in with my mouse. And this is the end point that I want. That end point is going to be up against the wall. So if I click and release the mouse, and then I can scroll with my finger, and then I can zoom in and make this snap to this endpoint here. Now I need to move this down onto the wall. So if I hover over this top edge, any point up here would work just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and click, move it down the blue axis, and so that you can see that as soon as it snaps to that blue axis, hold down your Shift key and then hover over this top corner here. And basically that will force it to line up by using the inferences in SketchUp. All right, now I want to show you something that's important here. If I were to use the Follow Me tool, which is the tool that we're going to use, if I click on this first piece of molding, I click on the Follow Me tool, it's not letting me do anything. And the reason is, is because this piece of molding is grouped and these walls are grouped. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go in and draw a line up here on the top 
that we're going to follow with the follow me tool. And by doing this, it just ensures that uh, I can follow it, but it's still going to be separate. Now I'm continuing to draw, so if you hit the space bar, that'll release. All right, so now on your crown molding, if you click on that, so I have my select tool, click, right click, and choose explode. And so now I have a line that I can follow. Oops, there it is. And then I have this, this little piece right here. So now I want to, there's a couple different ways I could do this. One, I can click the follow me tool, click on the molding, and then hover over this line. And you'll see that it follows my cursor all the way around. So you can just follow it just like that. So that's, that's pretty easy, but some people find that a little bit tricky. So I'm going to show you an alternate way of doing this. So I'm just going to undo. Now, if I use my select tool and I click on a line, hold down the shift key, and I have to zoom in, click on this other line, zoom out, hold down the shift key, and click on this third line. And it's not letting me get it, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. No, oh, it didn't get it. Oh, there it is. I just couldn't see it from the, the view that I was in. Anyway, so the three lines are selected. And if I then use my Follow Me tool, click on the molding, because I had those three lines selected, it will automatically follow. And there's our crown molding. Um, you notice that if I click on the box, if I click on the walls, those are separate and grouped. I could then now triple click on this right click and make it a group. Okay, and so now the wall and the crown molding are separate. So if I were to use my paint bucket and go choose a material, so I think I, let's see, I want uh, maybe some white crown molding. <clears throat> I can click and paint that all at once. And then if I want to go over here and select this box, Let's say maybe I want to make these a, a nice green wall. So I think you know, maybe one of these guys here, I can go over and paint this. But because they're separate, I can go in and manipulate both of them separately. So I could apply wallpaper to this wall and then have you know purple crown molding if I want. So that's the advantage of doing those separately. Now, if you're going to paint everything white and you really don't care, you don't have to group this. You can actually break this apart and then apply your crown molding. Um, however, it's very hard to isolate it later. So, so plan ahead, and if you're going to do it that way, um, go ahead and uh, group things and then draw using the Follow Me tool. All right, that's it.